G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here, and today I'm joined by Richard Selby, who is the, I guess you call the founder of London Affolds. How are you going, Richard? Fine, thank you, Matt. Excellent, excellent. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I wanted to get Richard on because he's created the London Affolds, and just go through and get a bit of history on that, but taking a step back, and just quickly, what is an affol? adult fan of lego as i'm sure everybody on this channel well knows so we are london affles i personally stick with affol as my pronunciation but i'm happy for other people to say affles <laughs> yeah there's always it's like when you sort of say lego tomatoes, or tomatoes. Legos. Yeah, yeah yeah just don't say legos <laughs> yeah it's just uh, amazing the group of people which are actually as part of the lug um you've got one currently displaying uh their models in the lego house in billand You've got the digital Lego specialist in terms of Neil, and there's another interview which you can check out for that. Uh, mockers, people doing exhibitions, GBCs, uh, spaceships, Macropolis, and even doing things with lightsaber blades. Uh, so you've got so much talent there, and you've got other people who specialize in electrical, being able to retrofit lights and other things for power-up functions, links to new elementary. Half of the House of Dots was done by people from the London Affolds, uh, four Including YouTubers. Your good self, Matt. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah. At least four YouTubers specialising in Lego and raised thousands of for uh, charity. So it's quite a diverse lug and a great talent there. So I just thought we'd get Richard in because um, he's kind of pulled all this together over the years. Do you just want to explain, sort of, in a sentence or two, what the London Affol Meet is all about and how that works? Okay. It's about hanging out with people you like. It's a social group, first and foremost. It's lovely that you give me any kind of credit for the amazing talents of our members. That's nothing to do with me. Our talent is in putting people together, and we're a social group. Simple as that. Yep, yep. And we meet um, generally once a month, and that's in uh, a pub in, oh, I can never remember, near Houston. Yeah, we meet in a pub near Euston. Uh, full details are on our meetup site if you should join. Otherwise, we keep the name of the public um, secret until you join. But yeah, we always meet at the same pub each month. We have other, that's our most, that's our core offering, the monthly meetups. Uh, we do other things too. Yeah, we take part in shows as a group. Um, we do outings to, you know, Bricks Live or whatever kind of exhibitions there might be on. But our first core offering is a monthly meetup for people to hang out meet their friends meet new friends and basically enjoy themselves with other affles oh no i said affles not affles what's happening to me <laughs> it's infectious <laughs> <laughs> so and just to uh clarify it is an actual adult group so for that meetup there are no kids are there it's for adult fans so we often get people saying can i come with my kids and the answer is well no unless your kid's about 16 or 17 in which case we ask them to come with the parents so we can be sure they get home safely after dark at night and if they're younger than 16 they're just going to have to wait of course if you're 18 that's fine you can consider yourself a kid and be 18 19 20 all the way up to 99 and we'll let you come <laughs> have we had anyone over 100 yet <laughs> um well i'm very proud to say that we have members in pretty much every decade i think it goes up to 70s um i don't think we've got anyone in their 80s yet but yeah we're a very diverse bunch and i'm really really pleased about that yeah yeah it, it is great that the uh this as i sort of alluded to earlier that there's a, a huge range of talents and people that are there all doing different things. So maybe if we just take a step back, how did this all get started? What was the original impetus for it? Um, like a lot of parents with young kids, I was fiddling around with Lego with my youngest. He would go to bed and I'd fiddle a bit more. And then I'd show him in the morning and he was like, no, that's cool, Dad, but let's do something else. And I was like, no, I want to do a bit more Lego, actually. Uh, and then I'd buy some bricks on eBay. And I'd show my kid, and my kid was like, yeah, great, Dad, but can we do a jigsaw? And I'm like, no, let's stick to the Lego. And there just came a point when I realized that I was more into it than he was, and, you know, perhaps this was a bit of an issue. And then somehow I discovered that there were a lot of other adults, and I wasn't alone. And that was really exciting. And I thought, you know what, I'd really like to meet some of these people. There's got to be a meetup group for adult fans of Lego. There wasn't at the time, and this was about seven years ago. So I took a deep breath, I started it, I issued a meetup group and an invitation, and to my great amazement, a few people turned up at the pub, close to work, after work one evening. I think we just fitted around one table, and it pretty much grew from there. How did it sort of snowball and grow over time? Gradual. More people came, people liked what we did, the word got round, and then I think the 
Lego as a hobby just became more popular with the advent of the Lego movie and so on. And I think when I first started doing this about seven, eight years ago, whenever it was, if I was a fan of Lego, I would get quizzical looks from people. I'd explain. I'd say, hmm, that's interesting, a bit weird, but fine. Okay, each to their own. Whereas nowadays, you know, everyone's heard of adult fans of Lego. You know, we're out in the open. We're mainstream. We've, we've passed the kind of niche weirdo test, and we're now just a thing people do. So I think that's greatly fed in to the, um, in, into the amount of people who come. But then also... I'm sorry if it sounds a bit arrogant, but I think we do what we do rather well. And so people <laughs> come back for more and bring their friends. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, I've only been going for the last little bit and it's, it's certainly it's such a great vibe and it's it's really good in that regard because now the the usual meetups, you get about 55, is it? Or about yeah, we, we cap numbers at about 60 um, because otherwise our room gets too crowded. Um, so, you know, some people don't show up. So 55 is about average for a meetup. I like that number. Um, there's always a few people who don't make it because and so, you know, that gives us a different problem. So I have decided I'd rather have more meetups rather than have a bigger and ever bigger meetup because I think it gets to a certain size when the uh, you know the friendly vibe might get lost. I don't want people to come in feeling they're lost in a football crowd. So I'm kind of happy with where the numbers are at the moment. Um, I've often suggested to people that, you know, maybe you should do a, one in South London or one in West London and we could do it like that to handle more people. But so far, none of the members have, um, have responded to that. So we're sticking where we are, but we might open some smaller meetups elsewhere in London if, if there's demand. Demand for it, yeah. Because I think the one thing which I sort of see, particularly from you and a few others, is there is a fair bit of effort and uh, organisation which goes into running the meet, and that, uh, sometimes the the bit of the unsung heroes with that because everyone comes along, has a good time, and then just doesn't realise actually the amount of effort which went into it. It's not a solo effort, you know. We have amazing members who also help with the organisation, and you know, it wouldn't happen without them. Um, to name a few names, John Gale is my co-organizer. Um, Alex Ciolo does a lot on the IT side, as does Michael Studman, and there are others. Okay, so it's definitely not a solo effort. Because certainly each month um, they have the themes. Do you just want to uh, elaborate a little bit on how each month might go, or the themes, or the ideas behind it? We like to have a different theme each month and we like to mix it up. So we cater for all sorts of Lego fans. So, you know, some people are into, some people are very competitive. So we like to have a challenge night once a year where we run kind of Lego team sports. They're great fun. But I mean, for some people, that's just the worst idea, you know, having to compete for points on a team. So for people like that, we have a meetup, which might be, you know, just a free build on a theme where you're just sat around on a table doing a few things. Um, but we really like to have a varied program of events and I'm, um, there, there are some regular things we repeat each year and we always keep a few slots open for members to suggest things. So a new one we did last year was wonderful. One of our members said, hey guys, you've never done anything with trains. We thought, yeah, that's right. So everybody bought in their train tracks and we made a giant train layout on the floor. Some people built in engines and that was a blast of an evening. And then of course, somebody else said after that one, you know what, what about boats? You haven't done boats. So now we're all thinking about how we can do a water boat based meetup where we can actually make some boats and get them to float. So, um, always keep open to different things always vary it so we can keep everyone happy um, another popular meetup theme we have is our master class which uh, transitioned to online in the, in the light of COVID-19 and Matt you yourself gave a wonderful master class and some of your amazing builds so thank you very much for that but yeah we have some members who are incredibly talented and it's wonderful that they're really happy to share with other members tips and techniques yeah, yeah, and that's where we sort of picked up last time from Neil with the digital stuff because um, I've been doing a little bit of work with him on that and, yeah, he's just phenomenal with what he knows and most of it he's put out for free for the public and and that seems to be the sort of community aspect on that as well. So um, the December meet that we had last year was one where we raised money for charity and things. Do you just want to talk about that a little bit? Everyone likes our Christmas meetup. That is the most oversubscribed. And if there's any meetup I could kind of make a bit bigger, it's that one. So we do let about 10 more people into that to let the room be a bit crowded. So our Christmas party is terrific. Um, if I say so myself, we distribute lots of the sets we get from Lego in Billund. 
um, to our members. And the way we do this is through a straightforward giveaway. Um, each member comes in, gets given a gift, and those members who've been more active over the year tend to get the bigger gifts. And those members who've just maybe been once or twice might end up with something small like a poly bag, but everyone gets something for free. And then we have a raffle. And the really big sets we put in the raffle, these are the ones we get given from Billund, but also members contribute to the raffle themselves and they're bringing all sorts of things, not necessarily just Lego based, you know, bottles of whiskey are very welcome too. Um, we sell tickets um, and the proceeds from that meetup always get given to charity and it usually makes a couple of thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, it was quite significant last year. And given that I would imagine this has been done in the past over a number of years, there'd be a, a fair amount, which has ended up going towards charity. Yeah. I, I wish I had the numbers at my fingertips, but um, you know, partly it's us, but also we're lucky because some of our members work for um, companies who match fund charity, um, charity donations. So with a little bit of bureaucratic paperwork, we can turn 1000 pounds into 2000 pounds. We haven't even managed to turn 2000 into 4000 yet, but you know, you get where this goes. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. There's something that the, the, the Excel guys are working on, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do our best to transmute base metal into gold when it comes to our donations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just sort of hinted at there um, that the AFOL is a registered uh, Lego user group um, and hence the relationship with Lego. Do you just want to elaborate on sort of what a, a registered Lego group is and the relationship then back with Bill and Lego? Sure. So a registered Lego user group has an official relationship with uh, the Lego company based in Denmark. Now anyone can set up a Lego user group and any of those groups can apply to be registered, but only some are accepted. We were lucky because we were there before they set up this scheme. So they contacted us and said, would you like to become a registered Lego user group? So I said, what's the catch? And they said, there was no catch. So sure, sure, why not? Oh, we'll give you some free sets too. So wonderful, what's not to like? Well, over the years, the relationships progressed and you know, it's, it's not really a one-way street anymore. They do expect a quite a bit in return from us in terms of porting back, letting them know what we're doing, letting them know any shows, letting them know how many people we've had to our meetups, taking part in forums. So there is a bit of give and take to this and it can be quite a bureaucratic overhead. But in return, we do get some great things. We get an allocation of um, support sets each year, which we can do with as we see fit. And also we're involved in a forum called the Lego Ambassador Network, where we communicate both with the Lego company in Denmark and with other lugs around the world, uh, other registered lugs around the world. Um, why is that useful? Sometimes they put out offers which go to lugs only. So the DOTS um, project, which Matt took part in and some of our members, was a great example. The uh, word went out on the Lego Ambassador Network. I put the word out to our members and some people had a wonderful chance to take part in that. And that would not have happened if we weren't a registered Lego user group. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you can click around the video when we release this and you see uh, did some behind the scenes for the House of Dots and you can see what the House of Dots was. And that was a fantastic opportunity for the guys, which we got to work on that. We you know, were working directly with uh, the Lego marketing people from Billund and they had a couple of builders out from... Uh, I think they were from the Czech Republic. I'm probably... Czech Republic, yeah, Klabno, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and just spending time with those guys, it was quite a phenomenal experience. So, yeah, certainly um, those sorts of things are great. And again, if if they weren't a registered group or it didn't have Richard sort of being that liaison or contact point, that would never have happened. So that was brilliant. And I'm sure everybody who uh, was able to work on that certainly appreciated that as well. Yeah, no, it's a great thing to be a registered lug, but there are times when people question it. And it's not for every Lego user group. There are some lugs who've said, you know what? this isn't for us you know best of luck but we're out of the registered section and you know the guys in denmark are completely fine with that too it's our choice whether to remain registered um you know the flow of traffic over the years has been that we should do more and more <laughs> there might come a tipping point when i'm going to question whether all the reporting and uh, answering stupid survey questions is worth it um yeah, there are aspects of it which i dislike but you know on the whole i think we do very well out of it yeah, yeah. So maybe if we just take a step back with that one, if you've got uh, somebody who's watching this uh, video and they're in an area where there isn't a uh, an AFOL group or a, uh, a registered Lego group, how would you suggest sort of initially kicking off or getting interest and in starting a meeting? So don't think about starting a registered Lego user group. Think about in terms of starting a local meetup. Um, the registration, that follows on later if you're successful, you know, 
your first focus is setting up a meetup for local people. Now we use the meetup website to do this. It's been great for me, but it's not a free resource. You know, we have to pay an annual membership of about two hundred pounds a year to use it. Um, again, I consider that worthwhile, but you know, maybe other people don't and would use a different system. So, Meetup was a great way of starting your group and getting people gathered around a table in a pub or wherever. Um, so, if you are going to start your own Lego user group, I think my biggest advice would be this. I would say it's a social group rather than a Lego group. Primarily, your main job as a leader of a Lego group is to make people feel welcome, to make all sorts of people feel comfortable, no matter what their level of Lego skill is. You know, I don't care if builders have can build a most amazing giant spaceships or if they can only put two grips, bricks together or if they've never even touched a brick. You know, it's about putting together a group of people who enjoy hanging out and Lego that almost sorts itself out. It's about the people. It's about making people feel welcome. Um, I sometimes see my role as a 1970s style hostess from an old television advert when I was a kid. You know, it's my role to make people feel comfortable, to make newcomers feel welcome, to make sure people get mixed up a bit. Um, because if that happens, then it's a good meetup. And, you know, people remember that they've had a good night out. They don't remember that they, they built a model which looks like you know, so-so, which has so many studs long, or is this color or that color. They remember having a chat with somebody. They remember connecting with someone. So your job is to organize a social event, and Lego is kind of the excuse, really. Yeah, that's a, a bit of a commonality or the, the initial reason why people look at it. Because just go, going off what you were saying there, that's, I think, one of the great skills that you really do have is for those newcomers or the people who first come along, really making them feel welcome, making sure that, you know, they're connecting with people or they're just being able to be included and not sort of, you know, off in the corner somewhere and things like that. So totally agree. And you do that really, really well. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it's terrifying walking into a room full of complete strangers for the first time for a social night. I mean, everybody has a first meetup and everybody feels it. I mean, sure, some people may feel it more than others, but, you know, it's really hard work taking that first step. And I think what puts off new members more than anything is the idea that there's cl impenetrable cliques. And I know this is a criticism leveled against other Lego user groups. So I've always been really conscious that we do our best to prevent this happening. So when a new person comes, you know, I'll make sure that they have a buddy who looks out for them in some cases. Um, I'll make sure that they're introduced to people. I'll make sure that they're plonked in the middle of a group rather than left on a corner with two other newbies with nothing to talk about. Um, you know, there comes a point when they're grown ups and of course they look after themselves. Um, but, you know, it's really important to make newcomers feel welcome and everybody's a newcomer at some point. And I think something I've also explicitly asked to members is, you know, you know, do make an effort. You know, I know you've got friends here, but, you know, please uh, make sure the newbies feel welcome because members will come and go. Right. It's inevitable with any interest group that at some point, you know, you're going to feel less out of love with Lego or cards or football or whatever it is and leave and you'll be replaced by somebody else. And that somebody else will be a newcomer. So newcomers have to feel welcome. That's that's it's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is there any, any other sort of uh, tips that you could sort of point out for anyone, you know, to have like a successful meet or that you found worked really well? Um, yeah, program your evenings, like we said earlier. So, you know, make sure there's a theme, whether it's uh, a free build or competitive, make sure people know what they're going to do of an evening so they can kind of settle in and get started. And otherwise, yeah, just make sure people feel welcome. And uh, I guess there's a lot of organization in the background, pretty boring stuff like making sure that the money works because we have to pay for our meetup room we have to pay for our meetup website you know obviously you've got to put a bit of attention to that and keep a spreadsheet with your accounts but you know nothing which any nothing which any other group doesn't have to put up with yeah yeah definitely and uh certainly um I know when I go to other sort of networking and sort of meetups, meetups in the city, the uh, the door cost is considerably higher than any for, for the Lego one. And it's great that you're able to keep those costs really down. Okay. Well, we asked people to pay five pounds for a meetup and we've recently started offering a manual membership, uh, partly because people don't want to pay five pounds each time because it's such a piddly amount of money to fish out. Um, so, you know, annual membership, uh, or five pounds at the door is what we, we ask for. And most of that goes on our meetup website and on um, paying the pub for the meetup room. Um, and, you know, other ancillary costs. We always like to print up a few stickers and badges and what have to hand out to members. So it's nice to have some money to do that. Yeah, just have yeah, a little bit. 
yeah, so there's not a lot to spend the money on, to be honest. And of course, Lego, but we do get a generous donation from Lego. Um, we used to get a donation of loose bricks, as did every other registered Lego user group, and that stopped, and it seems unlikely to come back. So I think we're going to have to spend some money on loose bricks um, over the in the next year, and so that's another expense we'll be looking to um, splash some of our cash on, keep yeah. our brick stock fresh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, something else we do which is possibly a good idea for another lug now we're in central london storage is an issue we don't have a magic garage or a lock up to put all our stuff in so what we do for our brick stock for free build events is we give members a really useful box the nine liter shoe box size um, we call them a brick box and we say look please members could you take this home with you look after it you can play with the bricks you can swap a few with your own private collection that's fine but when you come to a meetup if it's one of those meetups where we ask you to bring bricks do bring that box along and then assuming enough people turn up with the boxes we'll be able to do our free builds now mostly the system has been fine i accept that some boxes are going to go walkies and that some members we will lose touch with um collateral damage maybe but you know, on the whole, the system has worked for us. So nobody is storing more than maybe a box or two boxes maximum of our stuff at any one time. Um, however, if you live in a place where um, storage is less of a problem, you know, and you've got a big house with a garage, you could all probably store it at your at your own place. But distributed storage works well for us in London. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I'm sort of. Uh you call it a brick keeper and sort of become one of those. And the wonderful thing about that is whenever I bring uh, back those box of bricks, the kids the next morning think it's wonderful because it's like, here's new Lego. And there's sort of like, you know, different lot of things to play with. But as what you're saying, um, the distributed storage, when it comes back, it all gets mixed around and then, you know, everybody's able to do the free build. So it's great that there's sort of that communal pot of Lego as you'd sort of think of it to, to actually, uh, be there supplementing the event. Yeah, because a Lego user group does need some Lego bricks of its own. <laughs> but, okay, it, it's built up over time because initially when it started, it was, you know, some of my Lego I'd bring in and then, you know, but, you know we're lucky that things built up. Yeah, yeah. And one other thing which uh, I'll talk about is just the uh, communication and in particular Slack. Do you want to sort of talk to that or how that came about? Or Yeah, um, we've got a very good forum on slack which if you don't know is a bit like ms teams or uh, any uh, any one of a dozen other online chat tools now the meetup website has a forum but it's pretty clunky and doesn't really encourage discussion slack i think works brilliantly there's a free plan we use and you know we've got a, a lot of members chat in between meetups on slack um, now we are quite tight about who we let in so we say that you have to have been to at least one meetup we have to have met you in person ahead of time before we admit you i've turned down a few people who've wanted to join our slack channel without turning up to a meetup um but i think it's kept it really decent and civil um i haven't seen any of the kind of flaming wars or bad fallouts that i've witnessed on other forums over time and i think that's because people know each other and we ask for people to make sure their real names up there so it keeps things sweet i also think it's because we've you know deliberately kept the numbers to a manageable amount rather than packing it full of strangers so you know so far touchwood we've enjoyed a really fun friendly civilized discussion about lego and you know real life as well as inevitably people will do talk about you know they're outside of lego life yeah, yeah, I found that the uh, the communication or the, the having that slack there, it's sort of, there's so much interaction and it's so dynamic and diverse and really adds a great deal to um, the actual meets themselves. And by the time you go along, there's so much communication in between meets that then when you go along, it's like a newbie. Now you actually know people relatively well. Yeah, Slack has been great for us. Um, again, the free the free plan on Slack, we've kind of exceeded its limits, really, and it's very expensive to use the paid-for plan. Now, we have a couple of members who are great at IT, and they've done some very clever things to kind of delete our message cache and uh, tidy up old images so we don't bust our free account allotment. I'm not sure everyone would be able to do that, but Slack really worked well for us. And um, so far, we're still not paying a small fortune. If anyone from Slack is listening to this, I would like to say that you guys lack a pricing plan for nonprofits. Yep. <laughs> Certainly, uh, we'll make sure that that can get fed back to them somehow. <laughs> 
because particularly now we, we're during the, the COVID uh, pandemic as such. So certainly communication on that uh, has certainly gone up quite a bit and it's been a good way to keep in touch. Yeah, well, they have waived. They have let us use the professional account as a temporary measure during this COVID bit. But I have a feeling that that's going to go back to normal in a month or two and suddenly we'll be back down to the limits. But as I say, it's not a problem for us, thanks to some of our very smart members' uh, scripts, automated scripts, deleting the archive from us. Um, but, yeah. you know, it, 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 Slack is good. Um, and it's, but I view it as a compliment to the monthly meetups rather than as a, as, as a separate offering. You know, the monthly meetups are core. Cool. So other lugs have different focuses. Um, many lugs are much more focused around exhibitions. Uh, we, are, we do exhibitions, but we're less focused about that. We're more focused on the monthly meetups, having a good time, welcoming new members, and the Slack discussion. And the events which we do take part in tend to be smaller for a variety of reasons. But, you know, that's fine. If there's bigger events out there organized by other lugs, our members take part in those too. Remember, there's nothing exclusive about being a member of a Lego user group. It's not about, it's not like being in a football team where you have to support one at the cost of everyone else. You can be a member of as many lugs as you think you get benefit out of. So it's quite common for our members to be members of us and another lug or two. Obviously the national lug, British, gets a lot of members, but members are also involved in other local lugs. And, you know, absolutely fine by me. Be as member of as many as you get pleasure out of. Yeah, certainly you uh, a while ago um, put in a, a link to one of the other lugs and saying, hey, if you're interested, here's another one you can join, which is which has been great too. So yeah, it speaks to that idea of it's not being exclusive or in a silo or, you know, um, you know, we're better than somebody else or any of that sort of stuff. It's very much free and, you know, being able to support each other. Yeah, completely. I mean, you know, I, I, we're all different parts of the same community. Um, we're not, you know, we're not competing with others. We're we're happy to be us. We're happy for other lugs to be them. Having said that, I think I would feel a bit irked if somebody else set up another London Avos meetup group. But then I'd be asking myself what we're doing wrong. What we why are we alienating some people? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So okay then, and just with that, so if nobody's ever been along to the London one and they're sort of local, how can they get in touch, or how could they go about coming along to a meeting? Um, they should join us through Meetup, so www.meetup.com and search for London Lego or something like that, and we will pop up. We're quite well uh, known on that site. We have a lot of, I think we've got about 700 members on our books through that at the moment. Uh, we'll also pop up on Facebook and we'll pop up on Twitter, but the actual formal joining is free. It's go to Meetup, register, you'll get the details of the next Meetup, and do come along. Um, obviously, during this COVID-19 crisis, our meetups have moved to online rather than in real life. But uh, I assume that's a temporary measure. Like everybody, I'm rather hoping we'll get back to normal, certainly by Christmas. <laughs> yeah, sort of as people start saying Christmas, it's like, no, no, bring it, bring yeah. it forward, bring it forward. So like anyone with uh, kids and homeschooling knows why. <laughs> <laughs> quite yeah yeah so um yeah just is there any other sort of uh, questions or anything else you want to comment about the london affles which i should have asked or you might like to say, talk about no um i agree with what you said we have a terrifically amazing bunch of members and i feel privileged to be part of this group of people but you know it's yes some people are super talented you've named a few of them yourself you are super talented matt but it's not about that it's about people hanging out with each other and new friends and social stuff. And I said, it doesn't matter to me whether it's Lego or chess or football or running, you know, it's a social group and that's, that's what makes it work. Yeah. It's been great with that. There's, there's, there's so many different talented people in different areas doing different things. Um, and generally everybody's just sharing information and, and, you know, quite happy to talk about whatever it is they're into. Yeah. But that, that happens anyhow, is it? and, and the, it's the non-talented people that are just as important too. It's those yeah. who don't do anything. And, you know, I am a non-talented builder. My building skills pale in comparison with yours and other members. <laughs> Thanks, but yeah, it's much the same. I, I see a few people there and say, wow, how did you even think about that? Or you, it gives insights into their thinking. It's like, wow, you're just on a different level here. Like, <laughs> really? You can do that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, I think in London, we're kind of lucky because, you know, we benefit from a huge population. And the other thing we benefit from is visitors passing through. Uh, you know, we get people who are quite well known in the community internationally who say, hey, I'm coming to London. Let's make sure we visit a London Apples meetup. So, you know, we're, we're in a good position for that. If we were kind of out in, I don't know, Bellaricky or something, that might not be the case. Sorry to people from Bellaricky. It's just the first thing that <laughs> into my mind. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You just always need a, like a Timbuktu or something like that. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, then we'll just go into a couple of rapid fire sort of questions just to get a bit of an idea of uh, what your sort of interests are and things like that. So what is your favorite set? 7419 Dragon Fortress. Okay, then. Didn't know that one. I'll have to have a look, look that one up. Is that 7149? So that's going to be a, a relatively older set. Yeah, it's. I think there's always a set which brings you out of a dark age, and to me that was just like, wow, this is so amazing. I couldn't believe that Lego can do that sort of stuff. So it was uh, in the Adventurous series. It's a, you know, today it looks a bit primitive next to the Ninjago offerings, but it's that kind of Chinese temple aesthetic and lots of sand green, lots of red columns, and it just looked beautiful. And when I built it, I couldn't believe how you know how beautiful it looked, how playable it was, and how much Lego had moved on since I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah. You'll <clears throat> always find that when coming out of a dark age, it's sort of like, oh, wow, there's so many different things now. Um, I think for me, it was, uh, what is snot? <laughs> so, so what would be your favorite theme? Um, well, I guess adventurers, because that's that, it lived in that theme, and there's so many good things in that theme. Um, some of the minifigs were just amazing as well. So, yeah, I've got a really soft spot for the adventurers theme. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And is there a theme that you didn't like or don't understand or you're glad that it's gone? Oh, please. Can blockheads just F off and die? <laughs> <laughs> and do you like Technic or not? I don't like Technic. No. Okay. Um, and is there any mock that you've done that you've been really proud of? Um, yeah, when I was mocking many years ago, there were a couple of abstract geometrical designs I quite like. I'll, I'll send you a picture. Okay, cool. Yeah, we might add that in um, in, in the edit. Um, and how big a space do you have for Lego? Do you have a, a, a table, a room, a house? I have a bunch of stuff shoved under my work set desk in various trays. I think it's a tiny amount of Lego compared to other AFOLs. My wife thinks it's a vast amount of Lego compared to any reasonable human being. <laughs> that's always the thing is so like oh you think we've got a lot here's here's a photo of somebody else's and then <laughs> perspective yeah generally those i compare lego collections with tend not to have families so it's possibly <laughs> not a fair comparison <laughs> that's true it's like okay yeah where did you put it and how did you afford it <laughs> didn't have kids ah right yeah that makes sense now <laughs> um so just a quick uh estimate of how many pieces do you think you might have oh jesus uh <laughs> Tens of thousands, not hundreds. Tens Maybe thousands. not even tens. Th certainly thousands. That's not thousands. difficult, is it? But yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no, I, a tiny compared to most AFOLs. I've got a lot yeah. of small pieces, so so I guess probably tens. Yeah, yeah. And now it's easier with dots to have lots within a small space. But yeah. <laughs> and is there any theme that you wish they'd bring back? Um, no, I keep things fresh. You know, it's nice to see themes turn over. You know, some of them are less exciting than others, but I appreciate I'm not the target audience for most many themes these days. Yep, yep. And is there been a uh, favorite Lego build that you've done in the last year? Um, Ninjago City was awesome. And is there a favorite Lego resource or website or book or podcast that you tend to use? Um, no, not especially, I have to say. Yeah, yeah uh, just Brothers Bricks and Brick Set are my kind of go-to websites. Um, I'm sorry to say I tend not to watch podcasts and uh, videos. It just takes too much time. I just like to sort of scan something during idle moments at work. Yep, yep, no, I can understand that too. Um, and is there been a set that you've seen that you wished you bought but you never did? Um, the thing about being an adult is with a disposable income is you can go back and scratch that itch. <laughs> so there's no, never been something like a, a vintage Taj Mahal for like three grand that you've gone, mm, yes. <laughs> Taj Mahal was precisely that set and then they re-released it. Yeah. Then I built it. Then I actually found myself thinking, God, actually, this is really dull, isn't it? <laughs> so sometimes you shouldn't get what you want necessarily. Well, yeah, yeah, it's the, the lusting over it is more interesting than the, the actual having of it sort of thing. Um, and apart from London AFOLs, are you a member of any other AFOL groups? 
I'm a member of British, the National UK Lego user group as well. I think more for historical reasons. I don't really play an active part in it in any way now. Okay, then. And if there's anybody out there that is uh, watching that you'd wish to connect with that can help you out with something, is there anybody that sort of fits into that? Everyone I want turns up to my London AFO meetups. Right, so you're good with that. Okay, excellent. And um, just generally, again, how to get in contact with you or the London AFOLs? Our website is londonaffles.uk. Um, that would lead you to our meetup group. Our meetup group is London Affles or London Affles, as I prefer to say. Um, so meetup is the place to really join us. Uh, I will pay attention to messages on our Facebook group. And personally, I don't bother with uh, Twitter, but one of our members keeps an eye on our Twitter feed as well. So, you know, all the usual obvious internet -y ways, we're out there. You'll find us if you want us to get in contact yet. Okay, great. And just to wrap up, is there anything else I should have asked you that didn't? No, I think you've covered a lot there, Matt. So I'm, thank you very much for having me. Yep, brilliant. Thanks very much for being on and really appreciate the time and certainly the organisation to you and all the other people behind the scenes who do the London AFOLs. Also to add to an earlier response, um, we do not have a formal structure. We don't have an official committee. Uh, we don't have elections for the post of treasurer. We don't have a constitution. And that's been another quite conscious decision in how to organize things. I've seen this kind of formal structure cause more problems than it solves in other Lego user groups. So we kind of operate on a bit of a benevolent, benevolent dictatorship model with me as the benevolent dictator. Um, it seems to work. I'm kind of, I'm comfortable with that now. So, you know, sometimes a lack of democracy is a great thing because I can decide something and just do it without, you know, I might check with people or I might not, and we can move quickly. Um, so, you know, there's generally trivial things, but if I want to print up a bunch of promotional badges with we've got a spare couple of hundred quid, I go and do it and hand them out and everyone goes, thank you. Uh, we don't agonise over it for six months and have acrimonious battles about how best to spend this piddling amount of money. Um, so I think there's a lot of benefit in just doing it and not being democratic. Having said that, if we had genuine financial commitments, such as buildings to rent or salaries to pay, that would be a totally different matter. But because essentially our turnover is a couple of thousand a year, well, you know, we can afford to be that way. Yeah, yeah. And definitely with the uh, the names that you've mentioned there, there's um, a lot of people do put in a lot of effort um, to, to make the meeting successful. So I'm sure there's others there which you know haven't been mentioned, but you know, no, no disrespect, that it's definitely recognised. Definitely. Yeah. Other people make it possible. And um, I really hope that makes it to the edit. You know, it's definitely not just me. I might lead things. I might have started things, but it wouldn't happen without terrific members who are prepared to do a little bit more than turn up to the meetups and take part. You know, people who run meetups, people who do behind the scenes organization, uh, people who share their knowledge and passion, such as yourself and other members, you know, all of it makes it a great community. I think that's that's got everything covered. Thanks very much again, Richard, for both the, the interview and also getting the London Affols and getting the ball rolling and being that glue that kind of holds everything together, I guess. <laughs> uh, you're more than welcome. Okay, thanks very much, Matt. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego.